This week we're building a chair for a guest room that's also a bed. We're the White family. We live in rural Alaska, and for us, it's DIY all day, every day. So we're back in our guest room this week, working on a bunch of projects. We already got our farmhouse bed revamped and built nightstands. We built luggage racks that double as benches. And this week I wanted to, well, to be honest with you, I wanted to buy a side chair because I feel like every guest room needs a nice, big, comfy side chair. Um, but somewhere in the week, just this idea came to me that I could build a chair and it could flip over and turn into a bed. And I was like, we gotta build that. Okay, so to make this chair, I want to make it as easy as possible because I know I've got a baby and there's not a lot of time. And I want it to be rustic and kind of cool looking. So um, what we're going to do is build these two frames out of 2 by 8s Really simple. We'll just pocket hold together. And then on the top frame, we'll put slats. And then this is done. And then on this bottom frame, we'll put a bottom on it so that it holds bedding. And then we'll put like a cleat system on it and then we'll put more slats and that way the slats can have something it can hinge right here on this to get into the bedding and then um, we'll just put a hinge right here and here and then it'll all st stack up and be a chair so I think the build part's going to be the easy part the sewing is going to be the challenge so today is actually my birthday and I can't think of anything I'd rather be doing than going down to the garage and working on a project. I can't think of anything more fun than working in the garage. It's like I've been looking forward to this. I'm actually not kidding. <laughs> like I, I've been to Disneyland. It is overrated. Hopefully the plans work out and it doesn't disappoint because I'm so excited and did I mention it's my birthday? <laughs> birthday cake. A carrot cake. This project is going to be built mostly out of 2 by 8 boards and we're going to divide and conquer. Jacob's going to get the boards brought in and cut them and I'm going to start working on the cushions. So the cutlass calls for a lot of repetitive cuts and this is where the Craig track system comes in place. You set it to the saw that you're using, flip it down. This right here is set, ready to go, locked in place. And then all you do is then run your board down. We got all our 2 by 8 boards cut out and we're going to hit the pocket hole jig up. So this is our Craig jig and we actually have a pneumatic Craig jig. We leave that one set up for three quarter inch stocks since that's what we do most of the time. And then so I don't have to readjust that every time I want to do two by stock, we leave this one set up for two by stock. So we used the manual Craig jig for many years and it worked just fine. This one I especially love because it actually is easy to adjust between different size wood pretty quickly. Um, and you clamp it from the front, which is a big deal, and you can store all the bits in there. So. I'm gonna put three in here just because the two by eight is so wide, there is a fair chance that it's gonna crown or cup on you, so put one in the middle. And then I'm just gonna do this side on this and do all the 30 inch boards. Okay. <laughs> 
Got all my pocket holes drilled, so now I'm gonna start actually assembling. The reason that we did pocket holes is everything's gonna be hidden on the inside. And I want this chair to be really pretty because I'm excited about it. more a little bit proud of it because when I put the pocket hole screw in it, it usually locks just a tiny bit. So this is the bottom frame and we, we just built the two 2x8 two boxes and then we used 2x4s in the corners to connect the two boxes together. We held the two by fours up from the floor about three quarters an inch so that we can flip it over, throw a piece of plywood on the bottom of those two by fours so it's inset, it gives you something to attach to. And then this here, so I wanted this to be a storage compartment under here for bedding. So um, I'm gonna put these two by two in between the two by fours, that way the slats can sit on top of it and it acts as a mattress support and it'll flip up and the bedding's underneath. So I've just got two and three quarter inch screws for self-tapping. So this is the seat frame and it's all done and ready for slats. Now the top frame, the armrest frame, it's a little bit trickier because the front is open and um, there'll be cushions on the back, so it's a little bit more difficult to connect them together. So what Jacob's come up with is these Timberlock screws. Yeah, these Timberlocks are eight inches long, and um, anyway, went ahead and pre-drilled a hole all the way down through here, and it's pretty easy to stay straight. Um, they actually go quite easy. Once that's in, then you can go ahead and um, run your timber lock in. Those sit recessed below the surface, which are going to be fine because they're going to be the actual ones that are underneath, so you won't see them. So once I put these four in, I'm going to back them back out, and then I'm going to glue this together. And with that glued together and these timber locks, it will never come apart. And it's also a, um, a nice easy way to, you don't see uh, any fasteners on the chair when you're sitting in it. Alright, so this is the top frame and we're going to start adding the slats. So I'm just going to keep adding slats here, evenly space it for the even gap. So what we're trying to do is offset the two slat systems so that we can put the hinges in there and there's it all works out. So I'm going to test it right now. Big. Holy cow, that's big. What did we just build? Okay, so Giant toy box. We, <laughs> we want to center that uh, sets of slats so that they we have the hinges offset. So then these keep going my way. <laughs> yeah, it won't be perfect. Yep, right about there is where we want it. So when I do my plans, I always think like, what if, what if a thousand people build this and it costs two hundred dollars more than it should have? Like two hundred times a thousand, that's a pretty, it's like two hundred thousand dollars of wasted money. So um, I'm always thinking about how can I be frugal? How can I use materials? How can I not waste your money? How can you know not only I get a project that is really efficient, but also you guys too? So you know, a lot of projects I scrap because I'm like. It just doesn't make sense. It's more expensive than buying it. So I do have a lot of crazy ideas and um, not all of them are good ideas. And 
not all of them that I do do I know they're good ideas until they're done. So sometimes I do a project and it's I'm like this is the best thing ever and then it's not so great and then I don't blog it or I don't post it or I don't do a video on it. Um, and sometimes it works out and you know I'm happy to be taking that risk for you guys and trying these things out and being honest and you know sharing my projects with you and seeing you guys come back and share your projects and feedback because uh, that's what it's all about you know we're all just trying to get nicer homes that do more but not go broke doing it and that was a good punch you like taking it oh only problem is there's no cushion <laughs> So we have this store up here called Fred Meyer and it's kind of a superstore like Walmart and I found these camping pads that were $19.99 each. So I'm definitely going to use that for my foam cushions. We're going to cut one for the seat, the size of the seat, and then the remaining piece we'll cut in half and make two pillows. Also, so I'm going to work on covering these cushions. What I've got here is some polar fleece fabric, and I chose to use the polar fleece because it's inexpensive, it's nice and thick. And it's got a little bit of stretch to it, so um, it should be a little bit more forgiving for somebody like me who's not that great at sewing. And you don't have to finish the edges. Okay, so I got the cushion and the fabric is folded in half, so it's actually double width. The fabric can wrap all the way around it and overlap. And then I'll sew the two ends together and then this overlap you'll be able to tuck the cushion in. Out giving Everly a four wheeler ride trying to get her to nap because it's my birthday and I had a cup of coffee and that was kind of a day ruiner. <laughs> I got a birthday haul like no better. I got five bottles of woodworking wine, the best Cabernet. I got my car cleaned. I gotta eat goat cheese because you know Everly is allergic to dairy, so I haven't eaten cheese and then found some goat cheese and I tried it and she didn't break out a rash. So I got goat cheese. <laughs> this, is, this is big stuff. Yeah. Where's clean the house? I mean, seriously. Hayes went to my sister's. <laughs> it's the best birthday ever. And it's the sunshine in. Usually it snows on my birthday. It didn't snow on my birthday. So it's a good day. The only downside is I had to sew, but it's over because my last cushion's done. Okay. I put her in bed. Yeah, she woke right up. It's called the pen in the hand. A little thug. Say boo. Come here. Boo. What are you doing? I thought you were napping. Uh, so our chair is finally done and I'm going to give it the comfort test to see how it works. 
So this is the $20 camp mattress pad. And it is actually a really nice chair. I like that with the pillows on the back, you're, it's just the right depth and you could definitely curl up with one of your kids and read a bedtime story or, you know, sometimes I'd sit sideways in a chair or whatever, it's nice and oversized, so this is perfect. I think it's a, a definite win as a chair. Now let's try it as a bed. It's like somebody made a wine for me. 